All right, everybody. This is uh, this is the Mythwits, and we're going to do a live reading of a story of a story that I wrote uh, a couple years ago. It's a continuation from a story we did here last year with an all-star cast. Uh, star cast. Anyway, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> this uh, I'm going to skip the intro for the show bro, bro. because we have to we have to really get through this. There's a lot to do. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to let the narrator take it away. Midnight at the Welcome Wench. Previously. In Tales of Steel, James Campbell, an Astorian lawman, and Jay Litcott, a cook on the merchant ship Banshee, were trapped in the cellar of a butcher shop with several others in the town of Le Mans. The butcher shop, along with the southern district of Le Mans, was infested with Red Death zombies. In a daring escape, Jay directed the way to the docks where his ship, the Banshee, was located. James took point, slaughtering the infected between the butcher shop and the ship, Unfortunately, there were only two to survive the journey. To James's surprise, the Banshee turned out to be an airship, and it was already aloft. As they climbed the ladder to safety, the ship turned to head out over water. James Campbell and Jay Lidcott watched from the rail as the ship began to sail over the harbor. The infected area was obvious. The city guard had established a fire line. Everything from the line out to the water would burn to the ground, and the infection would stop there. Agents would be sent to track down any infected and kill or bring them back to quarantine. Jay Lidcott, still panting from the climb, steadied himself with his hand on James Campbell's shoulder. The grizzled warrior looked at Jay for a moment and shrugged his shoulder free. Jay put both hands on the ship's long, uh, rail along with his forehead. Without looking up, Jay began to speak. Well, that was a hell of a thing. We're quite lucky, you know. I mean, if the Banshee hadn't been there or hadn't been an airship... James, also looking at over the burning city, cut him off. Tell your captain I'd like to hire passage to Port 10. It's the closest, largest port in the direction I'm going. I'll hire, I'll hire other passage when I get there. From behind the two, a man with a thick Tuck Island accent spoke. Take off your clothes. James turned slowly, <laughs> his hand upon his hilt. I beg your pardon, but... James's words froze in his mouth, but his mouth remained open. Before him stood a crew of what looked to be cutthroat pirates, all of which were brandishing weapons. The leader of this crew was obvious, a dark-skinned older man with salt-and-pepper dreadlocks, definitely the tuck who spoke a moment ago. Beside him, a rail-thin, fair-skinned woman lifted her saber to the underside of James's chin. You might want to be shutting that hole of yours. You're bound to catch a fly. James closed his mouth and slowly pushed the blade aside with his free hand, never taking his eyes off the leader. Put a sword in my face again, bitch, and I'll spill your guts upon the deck. She laughed and lowered her sword to a less threatening position. <laughs> I like this one, Captain. I do indeed. Can I have him? <laughs> I have all sorts of... The dark-skinned man shut her down with a piercing glare. He looked back at the two men on the deck, pointed his sword directly at James, and spoke in a stern voice. Take off your clothes and toss them over the side. Do it. James slowly scanned the deck and stopped at Jay who was standing naked in the breeze. <laughs> Jay smiled and shrugged. I do what he says, James. <laughs> Captain Rawl is not known to repeat himself more than once, and he's not one to be trifled with. James grimaced and turned back to Rawl. A series of strategies ran through his head, but he knew that this was not the time to fight. He was at least a hundred feet in the air, over the bay of an infected city that was on fire. Not to mention, he was surrounded by an armed crew of cutthroats. What is the meaning of this? Why must I remove my clothing? Rao considered his next words. He could force the issue, but this man was of some position, a noble of some sort perhaps, who could be reasoned with. <laughs> After all, his sword was still in his sheath, and the man had a calculating look rather than fear on his face. Rao decided to take a rational approach instead. You have the red death spore all over ya. Me ain't gonna have you infecting my ship. Take off your clothes and toss them overboard, or I go toss you over with them. James considered the statement for a long, tense moment. 
He saw the logic in this and began to disrobe. If he were in the same position as the captain, he would do the same. Actually, he probably wouldn't have let a stranger from an infected town on board, but this captain was apparently more generous than he would have been. He finished taking off his clothing and tossed it overboard. He kept his belt, weapons, scabbards, and pouches, holding them with an iron grip. I'm not throwing these over. I'll fight you to the death first. The captain let out a slight chuckle. <laughs> that won't be necessary. Don't move now. Eh? This might be a little uncomfortable. Jay put his hand on James's shoulder. Just hang in there. This doesn't last long, but it's... Jay was cut off in the middle of his assurance by a blast of electricity which flowed from the captain's hands. It poured over them for several moments. The pain was excruciating. Jay screamed the entire, Jay screamed the entire time, but James barely made a noise. The electricity faded and the two men fell in a heap on the deck. Jay was unconscious and James was fading fast. As, dark as darkness closed in around him, he saw the captain turn and say something to another man who approached him with a blanket. As the blanket fell upon him, the world slipped away. His last thought was about how much he hated the smell of burning hair. Mm. Ral sat on his large ornate wooden uh, Ral sat at his large ornate wooden desk. A desk he would not have commissioned, but when one acquires goods by shady means, one rarely gets input on the design. He was staring intently at a small metal chest that sat upon his desk. This was no ordinary chest, however. It was a, a Shiver, merchant's chest, and one of the most secure containers of its kind. In his hand was the key. He held it up and frowned. This was a bad idea, he thought. However, the crew of the Banshee was in a desperate place, and this one deal could get them back on track. Raoul was in deep contemplation when his door swung open. He turned to see who it was, and the slender silhouette of Aja Lorne graced the open portal. He looked back at the key and spoke. Yes, Aja. What can I do for you? Aja smiled and began to slink across the room. I brought you some hot broth. Jay won't be about for a bit, and I thought she might be getting a bit peckish. She set the mug next to the chest, and then ran her nimble fingers across his shoulder and up his neck. Raoul blocked her hand and brushed it aside. Stop it. Me ain't the mood for your games right now. Aja pulled her hand back and chuckled. She moved to the other side of Raoul and leaned in close. So close, he could feel her breath. Her words poured like honey as she spoke directly into his ear. But I'm itching for a playmate. Come on, then. Be a treat. Come and scratch my itch. Raoul was not amused. They had played this game before, and the only time Aja did this to him was when he was under extreme stress. The woman had a sadistic <laughs> sense of humor. This was not the time for this sort of thing, which is exactly why she did it. She took a special pride in messing with the captain. Ra Raoul elbowed her in the ribs, causing her to gasp and fall prone to the floor. Enough, I say. Do you have anything of importance to discuss? If not, you can go leave now. Aja remained on the floor, her face a mixture of hilarity and pain. The blow to her ribs had completely winded her, but the reaction was exactly what she was looking for, and it had triggered a bout of uncontrollable laughter. Unfortunately, Aja didn't have enough air in her lungs to laugh. After a few moments, she was able to pull it together and was on her back chuckling and snorting. Raoul leaned his head to one side, cracking his neck. He stood up and walked over to her and extended his hand. Get up. I have a lot to think about, and your being all dotish ain't really helping me. Aja took his hand and stood up. She walked over to the desk and hoisted her bony ass upon it. <laughs> he, she picked up the mug of broth, took a long drink, and wiped her mouth with her sleeve. Putting the mug down, she pointed at the chest. So, what about that, then? Raoul looked to the floor, realizing she wasn't going to leave him alone. What about it, eh? Nothing changed. 
Aja perked upright like a dog hearing its master's call. Nothing. Oh, and I wouldn't exactly say that. You took on a boarder, and he's not exactly just any boarder now, is he? Raoul looked up at her with a stern gaze. No, he ain't just any boarder. Raoul might have been ready to say something else, but Aja, finishing the broth she had brought for him and soiling her sleeve even more, slammed the mug down on the desk. He's a fox in a hen house, he is. An historian, Reeve. And if he finds out what you got in that chest, he'll, there'll be hell to pay. By the deep blue, he's a bloody magi. One trained for combat. Cripes, Captain, this is no small matter. That bloke is dangerous. We should throw him overboard before he wakes up and be done with it. Raoul slowly shook his head. No, he is an honorable man, and we not murder us, hmm? We, he ain't done nothing wrong to deserve that. And we just have to be careful and see this true. By this time tomorrow, he gonna be gone. We gonna make this exchange, and then we'll be done with it. The money we gonna make off of this deal, I keep we good for a long time, gal. Aja nodded and pointed at the captain. Right. And what about the syndicate? If they catch wind of this deal, right, right in their backyard, they're going to be rather cross with us. Do you trust this bloke we're selling to? Raoul rubbed his chin. Not entirely. I know he are from days past, but he was trustworthy back then. But uh, I don't know, it's some time ago now. Hear me now. We don't have a choice, girl. This thing much too hot to be holding on to, and we can't sell it to just anyone. Hmm? Just as you say, the syndicate ain't gonna be happy if them a find that we sell this without them going with you. <laughs> the syndicate ain't gonna be happy without us good them we going through them. Uh, at that least, not in this part of the love. <clears throat> Not entirely. I know him from a long day past. And he was truly trustworthy back then. But that was some time ago. Hear me now. We don't have a choice, gal. This thing is much too hot to hold on to. And we see, we, we can't sell this to just anyone. Just as you say, the syndicate ain't going to be happy if them will find out we sell this without going through them. At least not in this part of the world. I go, go have to hope. That we brethren is still intact, as that this go down, this deal will go down without an incident. Well, no. <laughs> well, well done. Aja hopped to her feet and headed for the door. Well, I hope you're right. I don't think I'm in the mood to die just yet. She pounced from the desk and began heading for the door. As she passed through, through the portal, she stopped and looked over her shoulder. But then again, who is? Right, right. I'm off to wake Jay. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> James woke on a small but comfortable bed. He was naked but covered with a blanket. This was obviously in an officer's quarters aboard some kind of sea vessel. However, it didn't feel right. There was no sound of waves, and the ship didn't rock. At least, not the way it should. Then he remembered and muttered quietly to himself. Their ship. The Red Death, Limon in flames, pirates. Yes, it's all coming back to me now. As James began to get his whips, wits... <laughs> <laughs> Freudian soup. <laughs> He's remembering last year. <laughs> Let's get this whiz together. As James began to get his wits about him, he sat up. The room was bathed in a soft, warm light. It poured from a lantern upon a small table. Next to the table sat a middle-aged man. James flinched at the sudden realization that someone was in the room with him. The man was well-dressed and didn't look anything like the deck rats above. James swiveled around and put his feet on the floor, never taking his eyes off the man. Oh, good afternoon, James. There's a warm cup of broth next to you. I figured you might be hungry. We'll have dinner as soon as Jay wakes up and makes it. This should hold you until then. 
James kept his eyes on the man and nodded. He wasn't sure what was going on, and he wasn't about to let his guard down. However, it began to occur to him that he was in a comfortable bed and was not being restrained in any way. James was good at reading people. James is good at reading people. It was a major part of his job, after all, and the other man seemed both curious and polite. This was no pirate, but what about the others, he thought. Was this a good cop, bad cop type of thing? He realized that he had been staring at the man for an uncomfortable length of time. For the sake of hospitality, which he had been, ex which he had been extensively trained, he thought it best to at least address the man before him. How do you know my name? Sensing that the man was uncomfortable with his situation, Duran thought it might be best to give him some sense of comfort. He pointed to the shelf next to James. There are clothes on the shelf next to you. They're as close to your size as I could muster. They are clean and all yours to keep. Your possessions are next to them. You'll find them unmolested. Be mindful of your broth. I wouldn't want to have to clean that up. This is my room, after all. Duran pulled a small pipe and a stick from his pocket. Using the lantern, he lit the stick and then used that stick to light his pipe. A sweet aroma began to fill the room. This was pimian tobacco, a rare and somewhat expensive item in these parts. As James took his pants from the shelf, Duran continued. Jay said your name just before you went out. James, slipping on his pants, shot the man a sidelong glance. Went out. That's an interesting way to put it. I would have said been put out. Or, I don't know, been shocked into unconsciousness by a lightning bolt? James nodded and let out... Duran nodded and let out a ring of smoke. <laughs> yes, well, as unpleasant as that was, it was entirely necessary. You had red death spores upon you, and the only other way to be sure that you, they were destroyed would have involved setting you on fire. I imagine that would have been less pleasant for you, and aboard a wooden ship such as this would have been a bad idea, to say the least. James had pulled on his shirt by now and was reaching for his boots. His haze had lifted and his mind was beginning to work at full capacity. He realized that he was actually about as well-rested as he could remember. He slipped on his first boot and prepared the other. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Who the hell are you people and where are we heading? Duran took another puff of his pipe. <coughs> My name is Duran Higgins. However, I think the who we are is a Captain Ral question. Duran took another long drag on his pipe and let it pour out of his nostrils slowly, while James buttoned up his shirt. I know what you're thinking, but we are not pirates. We're merchants at best. Mercenaries at worst. But we are not thieves. James, who is now fully dressed admired the clothes they had supplied. They fit well enough and were of good craftsmanship. He might have picked them himself to wear. Duran continued. As for where we are going, well, my new friend, if I may be so bold, <laughs> you're heading... <laughs> are you hitting on him? <laughs> That's what it sounded like to you me. Man. Well, I mean, I know we're on a ship may. and all, but come on. Who was naked Find and who's bed? First. <laughs> who was naked and who's bed? Quiet, <laughs> oh, you. Shut up and read. <laughs> what have I done? If I may be so bold. <laughs> hey, Sarah. Well, my new friend, if I may be so bold. <laughs> We're headed to Portet, as you asked. Turns out that fate was at work here. We're headed in the same direction, and we'd be happy to have you as our guest until we dock. As for payment, that's between you and the captain. <laughs> this is getting worse. <laughs> this is not getting better. This is getting worse. <laughs> hey, Pete, I want a rewrite here. <laughs> We're all page nine, man. We got all kinds of love in the good ship too. lollipop. It's all reflection. It's all reflection. Consider your payment of service is rendered. I won't wash those sheets for a week. Just wait till you get a size of me cotton balls. <laughs> 
but stay the hell away from me poop deck. <laughs> Can't believe we got all the way to page 10 and then went off the rails. <laughs> I'm holding sorry. it in. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I couldn't help it. My bad. I couldn't help it. Oh, it slides up. I oh, it's just like last year. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Gross. The next line is I can't awesome. wait to see how you pronounce this one. <laughs> Be very careful how you say this, John. Your life may depend on it. Face, John. Focus. And action. Hey, Pete, I think we broke him. Come on, John. Come on, John. One more sentence, John. man. One more sentence. Come on. Come on. One more. Go ahead and Go say on. it. Please. Say it. Okay. Composure. Composure. Quiet on the set. <laughs> and action. By the sound of your pouch. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't catch that one. I'm sorry. One more time. John. Line. By the size of your pouch? Is that what you said? By the sound of your pouch, it shouldn't be much of a problem. <laughs> They don't know mention me, cannonballs. <laughs> no, no, wait, there's more. Oh my god, Pete, what the fuck? That's what I checked, too. It's more like grape shot. <laughs> oh no, it gets better. <laughs> James began to strap on. <laughs> oh god! His sword and dagger and pouches. <laughs> when he looked up, he realized that Duran had already started up the stairs towards the door. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Roche, I had it. <laughs> <laughs> Please join us on deck as soon as you are ready. The captain is quite anxious to talk to you. <laughs> not. James looked through his possessions. Everything was there, and it didn't look to have been gone through. In a barely audible voice, James muttered, I bet he is. <laughs> oh God! We we did so well for so long. We got like what eight not eight pages in before. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 much better. You, than you my bad, y'all. My bad. <laughs> Captain Raul Savari stood apart. Stood back. <laughs> Captain Raul Savari stood tall upon the quarterdeck. At the wheel stood Shizu, an enormous reptilian man, sitting on the rail wrapped in a blanket and hair blowing in the crisp fall wind sat the sleek figure of Arja. Coming up the stairs to the quarterdeck, Duran approached the captain. He's away, Captain. I should expect him on deck in the very near. Raul called down to Jay, who was standing on the deck below, and had just come up from his quarters. Tell me now, what I should know about this man that just bring aboard my ship. Jay squinted into the bright sunlight as it glistened behind the captain. He's an Astoria Reeve, but he pretty much saved my ass back there. I owe him one. <laughs> Ralph frowned and closed his eyes. I know what he is. I can recognize the insignia on his dagger. The question is why he is here. This uh, does to say, why is he so far from his home? Astoria is a long way away. Jay scratched his head, and with an exaggerated look of, I'm thinking very hard upon his face, answered the captain. I don't think we have anything to worry about. He talked about being on some mission, looking for something valuable a band of Yedites took back in his bed. I doubt he's going to cause any trouble for us. <laughs> Raoul looked at Aja. The eyes met. Yeah, fox in a hen house, all right. He pulled a watch from his pocket, looked at it for a moment, and put it back. Chick Zoo, I think it's time we put she in the water. Have Kalan spot the ships. And when it's clear, put she down. The burly reptilian man looked ahead and barked out orders. A man covered in a coarse brown fur stepped out onto the deck 
and took the altitude wheel. He unroped it and awaited the command. A moment later, a small man wearing only shorts and covered with bright green pattern carapaces stepped onto the rail of the forecastle and leapt towards the mast. He snatched one of the ropes in mid-flight and, quick as a monkey, scurried up towards the crow's nest. James stepped out onto the quarterdeck. All but Chick Tzu looked over. I'm called James Campbell, and I'm assuming you're the captain. Ryle, right, is it? I was told that you were interested in talking with me. The captain looked at James and nodded. James continued. So, poor ten is where we are heading, then? Ral nodded again. That is where you say I want to go. And, fortunately for you, that is where we is heading. Otherwise, I think you'll be real disappointed, eh? This ship is not a ferry, and we don't generally take on passengers. James narrowed his eyes at the man. He was trying desperately to get a read on him. <clears throat> calm, he thought. Much too calm. The man had surely seen his emblem, and James was sure that Jay had told him who and what he was. He couldn't help but see this as a pirate crew. Merchants and mercenaries. Bah, he thought. This was a pirate crew if he'd ever seen one. What an eclectic bunch you are. You, the captain, a took shaman, leading an astonishingly, st- hey, leading an astonishingly mixed bunch. That is a really asshole thing to put together there, Pete. That's really hard to freaking pronounce. <laughs> you did good, kid. <laughs> Ralph smiled and looked into the wind. What can I say? I like a variety. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> <exciting and weird. laughs> it's not the bad shit. down there? Not yet. Yeah. There's something going on down there. You should probably be over there. <laughs> Three whistles rang out from the crow's nest. Chick Tzu stared straight ahead and firmly at the wheel, called out to the captain that all was ready. Raoul turned back to James. I suggest you hold on to the rail. We're about to descend, and uh, the touchdown can be quite rough. I don't want you to get hurt now. We are! Begin to descend! Two degrees down! The hairy man on the altitude wheel acknowledged the command with an aye aye, Captain! He released the binding grip, placed it into the holder, and turned the wheel two clicks. James braced himself against the rail and the ship began to descend. Touchdown was fairly rough, but not as bad as he suspected. Once the vessel was afloat, the crew pulled in the altitude sails and tucked them neatly below deck. This was now a sailing vessel like any other. James just watched in amazement. That's quite handy. From the outside, no one would even know this was an airship. Ral nodded. That's the point. This is not the kind of thing you want to advertise. <coughs> James smirked and shook his head. <coughs> After a short pause, he addressed the captain again. <coughs> what do I owe you? Raoul, who had been looking at the compass, turned to him with a puzzled look. Uh, sorry? Owe me for what? James scowled. For the passage, how much do I owe you? Raoul blinked a few times, and then it registered. Nothing. Well, what? Didn't I just tell you? This ship is not a ferry. We don't take charge for passage. James, agitated, pointed at the tall man. Look, I don't take favors from strangers, especially... Men of your ill. <laughs> <laughs> the captain put his hand on his chest and grimaced in an exaggerated, I'm hurt gesture. <laughs> James stopped and steeled himself. He was probably right, but there was no cause for being rude, and the captain had been nothing but kind to him. Relax, he thought. He took a deep breath and let it out. He put a smile on his face and began speaking again. I'm sorry, that was quite, call- I mean, uncalled for. <laughs> Let me try this again. Please allow me to pay you for my passage, these clothes and the meal that you'll be serving. I have plenty of money, and I'm happy to pay my way. Raoul shook his head and put his hand on James's shoulder. James looked at the hand and was ready to brush it aside, but he fought the urge. He looked back at Raoul, who nodded and slowly lifted his hand. 
I tell you what, you save me cook, a very valuable beloved member of this crew. Let's just call we even, eh? On the heels of his words, Aja chimed in. Oh, come on, man, that's bollocks. Jay's a good cook and all that, but beloved? Cripes, he's the most annoying little shite on this boat. Why, just the other day, the boys were... Well, cut her off. Aja, hush your mouth, gal. I see captain, and this my decision. He saved a valued member of his crew. No charge. That's it. Duran walked up to James and gave him a hearty slap on the back. Say, what did I tell you? <laughs> We're not so bad. How about a smoke? <laughs> <laughs> I have another did pipe in... gladiator <laughs> movies? <laughs> I was just thinking of the masthead, but never mind. <laughs> so bad. Maybe you and I should go to the forecastle together. <laughs> Let's you check out my bilge. <laughs> or check out the coxswain. There yeah. we go. There we go. <laughs> I have another pipe and plenty more of that exquisite tobacco. I'd be happy to share it with you in exchange for some exciting stories from your adventures. <laughs> I do love a good story. <laughs> James nodded and walked off with Duran. <laughs> It had been some time since he'd been able to relax mm. and have a nice smoke. Mm. Mm. And being that he didn't have any duties or anywhere mm. to be at the moment, there was no reason to not enjoy the evening. Let it happen. <laughs> Just let it happen. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Don't clench. <laughs> Permission to come aboard? <laughs> oh, damn. Captain's log. <laughs> Supplemental. Oh. <laughs> Just let go of the captain's pipe, yo. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, there's words. There's words. There's words. There's words. Let's keep going. <laughs> As it turned out, Jay was quite the cook. That evening, James and the crew dined on a delicious fish stew. The crew was not as excited about the meal as was James. They had been eating fish for some time now. The stopover in Le Mans was supposed to bring much-wanted meat, cheeses, and fresh bread, but the Red Death had put an end to that. Hopes were high for a proper replenishing at Porten. After the meal, the crew went. The crew went long into the night with drink and song. James, who had been on the move for the past six months, broke down and enjoyed himself. <laughs> However, he managed to maintain his composure and limit his limited his drink. He was cautious of this crew, with good reason, and <laughs> was, was still a stranger in strange waters. During the festivities, James found himself in a long conversation with Duran and Jay, both of whom were quite tipsy and rather talkative. James thought this would be a great time to get a story out of this odd crew, as both Jay and Duran were fond of gab. It turned out that James had been partially correct. This was a pirate crew. However, their captain wasn't cruel enough to be an effective pirate. This had led to a limited number of potential targets. Raoul mostly targeted Sh uh, Shivir Alliance vessels, as they were generally wealthy. And with the Alliance basically being syndicate-controlled, he felt little guilt sticking it to them. <laughs> <laughs> so many opportunities to scream phrasing. So many. So many. We didn't come up with a safe word, did we? <laughs> It's a little late now. Mine's corduroy. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Raoul saw the Banshee and her crew as gentlemen pirates and vigilantes. Great Magus knew long... Bleh. Great Magus knew most merchants were extorted by the Alliance for protection money. These lanes can be dangerous places, don't you know, was how they put it. However, going up against the Alliance meant well-equipped ships and crew with a lot of, uh, with a lot of running. 
As time went on, things got out of control, and the Banshee found herself running more than pirating. <clears throat> As their coffers shrank, the crew threatened to abandon Rao. In desperation, Rao had taken on Duran and Chiksu, who were honest merchants. Duran had recently quit the Alliance and was having a difficult time because of it. Most shops along trade routes were part of the Alliance, like it or not. As such, they were encouraged to only trade with Alliance merchants, or else. Duran and Chiksu joined with the, uh, joined with the agreement that there would be no pirating. There were, they were a merchant vessel that operated outside of the Alliance and moved exotic and rare goods that needed to go long distances quickly and without molestation. <laughs> too late. <laughs> Much too late. <laughs> <laughs> a task the Banshee was ideally suited for. From time to time, this crossed paths with mercenary work, and as long as no innocents were harmed, Duran and Chitsu were fine with that. James found himself liking this crew more than he would have imagined. <laughs> I have no response to this. Keep going. <laughs> he thought that he shouldn't have, being a Reeve and all. They did operate outside of the law, but his hatred for the criminally controlled Shiva Alliance made them seem almost like heroes. Yep, James couldn't help but like this crew. He really hoped that he wouldn't have to go up against them one day. His duty as a Reeve might force that if they came mucking about in his land. He let those thoughts slip, though, and decided instead to enjoy the company, the wine, and Duran's excellent tobacco. The only two not partaking of the festivities were the captain and Chitzu. They would sail on through the night while the, ca while the crew slept until the late hours of the morning. The captain was getting up in age and had plenty of such behind him. He was content to take care of his ship and his crew. His companion, the giant reptilian, was not a drinker, and he had a difficult time getting around below decks. As the morning wore on, ships became more frequent. Port 10 was close. Aja crawled out from below decks, bleary-eyed and scratching her head. She nodded to the captain and thumbed towards the, his door. That was her way of telling him to hit the sheets. She'd take the banshee into port and wake him later. <laughs> Kellen was next. He relieved Chik Tzu. Coffee was on and Jay was whipping up breakfast. The rest of the crew would make their way up soon. The banshee sailed into port without incident. Aja met with the deck master, with the Aja met with the dock master and made the proper arrangements. It was about this time that James found himself upon the deck. Jay was already there, relaxing with a plate of breakfast. James walked up and extended his hand to Jay. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you. Everyone thinks I saved your ass back there, but I know differently. Not for you in this ship. I never would have made it out of Le Mans. You're a survivor, and you would have made it without me. I'm sure of that. Jay smiled and extended his hand. Right, whatever you say. Good luck, my friend. I never thought I would be sad to see a lawman leave. Safe travels back to Astoria. James nodded. Give Duran my best. <laughs> oh, and thank your captain for the ride. I know he can sit. I oh, already no, it did. It gets better. <laughs> I know he considers us even, but I feel as though I came ahead on this one. <laughs> Peter! <laughs> All normal <cool> words. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's a good thing there's a table there. Yeah. <laughs> James stole a big piece of bacon from Jay's plate. He turned and walked down the gangplank and on to dock six. The welcome wench wasn't far, and it was where he was sure he'd find passage back to Astoria. It was infamous among Astorian rangers, and he wanted to see it for himself. He'd told Duran and Jay about the wench, and now thought about how bad of an idea that was. <laughs> ah, well, he thought, what harm could it bring? That's the word right there. <laughs> Right about then, he bumped into someone. He'd been preoccupied in his thoughts and wasn't watching where he was going. <clears throat> Excuse me, you stupid git. I know I'm skinny, but I'm not that damn skinny. You might want to pull your head out of your ass and watch where you're going. 
James, more than a little embarrassed, began to apologize. I do beg your pardon, miss. How terribly inconsiderate of me. I'm so... As he spoke, he looked up and saw the tall, slender figure of Aja. She was already laughing and pointing at him. <laughs> you should see your face! She did her best impression of James. Oh, I beg your pardon, miss! <laughs> but couldn't hold it and began to break out in laughter once again. <laughs> you are something else, I tell you. Something else. <clears throat> so... Are you on your way, then? James, now red-faced, grudgingly replied. Yeah, I have important business to attend to. Aja just shook her head and waved him off dismissively. Right, right, big important man, blah, blah, blah. Tell you what, love, you're a pretty good sport. Good luck, and uh, beware of pickpockets. This town is full of them. James would realize later that she ran into him on purpose and had used the bump to lift one of his small coin pouches. It wasn't much, and Aja probably only stole it to agitate him. James made his way to the wench and secured a room. He then went off to obtain supplies, clothes, and a much-needed bath. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's do what we can. Okay. James would... No, we don't. No, we really don't. <laughs> we really don't. And we, James was settled into his room with enough supplies to start his journey again back to Isbeth, when he'd have to face the Baron with his where he'd have to face the Baron with his failure, the Eye of Isbeth. By the great balls of Magus, how could he have let that get away? One of the most valuable orbs in the kingdom. He had failed his liege, and he would have to suffer a great dishonor for it. He lie awake in his bed, thinking about thinking about his failure, and unable to sleep. Since he wasn't able to be, since he wasn't going to be sleeping anytime soon, he figured he'd head down to the bar for a smoke, a few ales, some good music, and perhaps a midnight snack of some sort. It was about midnight. He was sitting at a small table by himself and was enjoying a little of everything he had come for when Jay burst into view. James, good, you're still here. You got to come quick. We're in trouble. James looked up quickly with an intense level of concentration. We're in trouble? Why and with whom? I have yet to do anything in this town to warrant trouble. Unless having a hot bath, a good meal, and a nice mug of wine has become a crime. Jay shook his head. No, the crew. The crew is in trouble. The he stopped in mid-sentence and lowered his voice. The syndicate has them <clears throat> held up on the banshee and is going to kill them. James looked at Jay and put his hand up. So we does not include me, then. <laughs> Jay shook his head. No, of course not. The captain, Duran and Chixu, they've been taken captive on the ship. They were ambushed. They're tied up and are being tortured. They're going to kill them horribly, as an example. James rubbed his chin. This was bad news. If word got out that an Astorian Reeve helped a bunch of pirates against the Alliance, especially in their territory, it would be a diplomatic nightmare. The Alliance was very powerful, and every government relied on them heavily. And yes, everyone knew the Syndicate operated out of the Alliance, but it was how things were. No, I'm sorry, but this is just out of the question. I can't do this. The consequences could be devastating for me. I'm sorry. And he meant it. Duran was a good guy, and they had really bonded the night before. <laughs> the crew wasn't clean, but... Boy, that's an understatement. Got it. Oh. But they weren't exactly dirty, either. <laughs> they lived a romantic existence. And James admired that just a little. <laughs> Jay, very agitated, began to yell, sorry. <laughs> no! Are you kidding me? You're a Reed. They've done nothing wrong. The Syndicate... He stopped himself again and lowered his voice. The Syndicate <clears throat> is going to murder them in cold blood for selling some fancy orb in their territory. The law of this town has been paid off, but an historian Reed is surely above that. Are you going to allow these criminals to do this? James was so conflicted. 
Jay was playing the emotional card and it was having its effect. What to do, James thought. Surely he couldn't allow them to torture the crew to death. They weren't bad people. Well, maybe a little, but they didn't deserve this. He couldn't shake the urge to help. As a Reeve, he'd sworn to protect the innocent, to protect the people, especially from scum such as this. Then it hit him like a punch in the face. Did you say fancy orb? Where did they get this orb? Jay looked at him puzzled. Yeah, one of the crew, a girl named Sazzy, bought it off some Yeti Lamont she used to run with. Apparently, he stole it from some bear and... Just then, all the pieces came together. <clears throat> Jay realized what James, an historian Reeve, was doing all the way in Le Mans. The orb. That's what he had been after all along. Unfortunately for Jay, James was about two seconds ahead of him. Jay started to turn, and James had him by the wrist. Where are you going in such a rush, Jay? Don't you want my help? All right, everybody. Hey, we're going to have to cut it because it's time. Uh, but thank, thank you, everybody. Can you real quick? I'll, I'll tell you what happened. So, so basically, they, uh, uh, he goes back to the ship. He, the guy, James, is actually a... He, he is a... Uh, uh, he's a He's kind of like a jet. Kind of like a fancy type jet. Winds up killing all the bad guys. Uh, gets his orb back. And leaves the crew again. <coughs> going his way. Uh, and then the story continues on and on. There's a piece of off paper story. With or without Durant? With <laughs> you ain't getting rid of me that easy. live happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, everybody.